I'm Jordan. This, this is Unedited. Welcome to Unedited. I am excited to say welcome back to Jordan. Oh. It's good to be back. Thank you. And in celebration <laughs> style, you get snow. I did, yes. You get snow, your favorite thing in the whole world. You know what? For some people, snow kind of brings the mood down. It kind of makes them somber. Yeah, they're cursing you right it now. It brightens yeah. things for me right now, right? <laughs> like, I, last night when I saw it coming down by like the light, like just just heavy, it's, oh, it was the best feeling ever. And even your very so. first day off, you got a little sprinkle. I did, I did. It's like a little gift just for you. I did. I purposely sat outside that night just to enjoy it a little bit so. <laughs> there is a lot though we got dumped on a little bit like yeah. it's not the worst we've seen but it's no, a big it's a big foot or so right it's so it's here to stay it's not going anywhere no yeah, yeah. and so. driving around was a little crazy like on the weekend and Def even today the definitely. roads are kind of crazy but they're out there yeah. doing their stuff yeah i got my winter tires on early for once it's the first time i've ever done it early and uh but even even the first that first snowfall we had with the ice i was i was all over the roads yeah so couldn't even drive straight so like i was saying to you today i love the snow like yeah. i love how it looks i love that we can do things outside mm -hmm. just if it wouldn't go below <laughs> minus 20 yes i could like it even more <laughs> even more because yeah. i love that we live in a place that has all the different seasons yes and our fall this year was like an actual season like yeah. do you know what i mean it yeah. wasn't like a flash and all the yeah. leaves are off yeah so yeah i'm enjoying it and and Christmas is like right around the corner. I know. I and know. so you're going to be in a good I'm mood excited. like every single I'm day. I'm looking forward to it. I like winter until about the end of January and then it can kind of get going, yeah. right? So yeah. because I feel like the Christmas snow right now has a point. Years. Exactly. Because yeah. we're getting into Christmas and everything's kind of coming out. Even like holiday drinks and cups and stuff I'm seeing flying around, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that eventually. <laughs> we'll get to it. But uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's really good. And uh we're sipping hot cocoa right now. I know. Producer Ashley surprised <laughs> us today and put hot chocolate it's in our cups. It's an absolute treat, eh? It is awesome. <laughs> Keeping feels, us going. Feels like winter's here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's going on in town this <laughs> next couple days, I guess? Well, yeah. Lots of things, mostly on Friday, but we're wearing our poppies. We are. Yep. Remembrance Day is on Friday, and yep. so there are things going on in the city. Absolutely, yeah. There's a the annual service, which happens at Saks Health Center, is happening this Friday. I think it starts at 10 a.m., yep. right? Doors open at 9. Mm -hmm. uh, for, in 2019, they called it the biggest service in Canada. You were showing me that, yeah. that article, yeah. So, which is... Not, I guess it's not unsurprising because there's about 10,000 right? people who go there, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, I would have thought that. That's what yeah. I would have thought, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, no, Saskatoon really does it up. And I guess it makes sense because I lived in a previous city, which I won't mention the name of. And I remember not being able to really find a Remembrance Day service there in that city. But when I come back here and I used to attend the one here, you know, it's it's, it's a great service. They put a lot of work into it. If and, they pay uh, attention to our episodes, they know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I'm not going to not gonna diss that city, though, by any means. No, of course not. But no, they do an awesome, awesome service here. And it's just good to remember and just, to, you know, really pay respect to the past, right? And, and that's number so. 91 yeah, that's, for services. Absolutely. Okay, so that's a lot. lot. It's a long time, yeah. So it happens this Friday, and uh, if you're have you been to out one about, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you say is your favorite part of it? Like when they're, I think for me, I'm the just ceremony. I think for me, I don't know. The most meaningful part for me is always the moment, the the, the the moment of silence, right? Yeah. And when they often play the the pipes and stuff, right, and get that going, I, I definitely find that. Uh, it's that good meaningful. that you brought up the moment of silence because even if you can't get out to a service, yeah. even if you can't do any of the activities, you can take a moment yeah, at 11 o'clock that yeah. day yeah. and have one minute of silence to honor our veterans, right? Like that's absolutely. something everyone can do, yeah. right? No, yeah. absolutely. So, and they, they haven't done the service here, I guess now for since 2019 because of COVID, right? Because mm -hmm. we were in a pandemic time. I think they had an online one last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. an yeah. online one last and, year. And actually, I think they are going online again this year yeah. as well. As so an you, option. You, you can watch it online line as well i'm sure if you're local in the area it'll be on tv on one of the channels but uh no it, it's it's a uh, it's a good time for people to come out and just remember and pay respect to, to those who fought for us so we could be free yep so and then i saw a cool thing that is starting to come out about poppies yes with the little scan code yeah so there's these poppies that are being, that. I love it. Like mm -hmm. we were just saying like, this is so like new age yeah. and so like it's current, practical right? yeah. and current and yeah. like, but yeah, you get the, the new poppies when you get them out in the typical boxes at the legions and stuff like that. There'll be a scan code on the poppies and each poppy, when you scan it, you can learn about a different soldier that had passed away and served in 
the wars, yeah. one of the wars. Yeah. And so I think that that is amazing because knowing the personal stories yeah. to the soldiers, I think is how we honor them. Yeah. You know, I mean, it might not be the only way, but it's definitely one of the ways, right? Yeah. It adds a personal touch to it, right? Like it's one thing to think about everything at once, but when you start hearing individual stories and what people have been through, what they experience, it makes it just so much more meaningful in my opinion, right? Me too. And these yeah. stories need to be heard. They deserve to be heard. Yeah. So. And Ashley and I, we had a chance uh, this week to go to the Veterans Museum here in Saskatoon. We wanted to do something a little different to yeah. honor them and to learn and to educate ourselves. And what you're saying about the stories is the most personal part. Like it's heart wrenching, you know, like there mm -hmm. were so many letters that had been found and that had been written that you could even read in this museum. And we're going to show you a video in, in a minute here. But um, one of the men who worked there and they're all volunteers there was a soldier, was okay. a veteran. And he was doing a tour with a, a group of kids and he was sharing his story. And Ashley and I had just stopped in that moment to listen because it was very emotional and very imagine. intense. Um, he had been burnt quite severely, like disfigured throughout his body. Um, and uh, he told the kids he did it for the guy mm -hmm. who was beside him. Yeah. who is his best friend. And he'd said one of his biggest regrets in life was that he never told his friend that he was his best friend, mm -hmm. but he laid his life down for his friend um, and was burnt. It didn't oh. work out in their favor. His friend ended up passing away um, and he's developed a stutter every time he goes to talk about what happened. And um, he had a lot of years of pain from us, from people who treated him differently because he looked different. So he sounded different, you know, and it was really heart wrenching because like, it just goes to show, you know, when you meet somebody, regardless of what they're saying, whether or what they look like, like you don't know their story. No, never. You, you, you don't even know what it's like to travel in their shoes for one day, mm -hmm. you know, and Ashley and I were in the car. We're like, I just can't imagine treating someone like that. Yeah. But maybe we could like, you yeah. know, like you just don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you hear people's stories, you develop like an understanding. Right. And you, you begin to see things from a different point of view, which like we often see life through everything we experience. Right. And that's mm -hmm. totally not the case. And so yeah. we need to hear each other's stories. And uh, that must have been a powerful experience and moment for you too. Very powerful. And there was so many things in there, like just really cool things too. Like just from back then, like vouchers and how they paid for food and pictures of soldiers. Uh, the very first Aboriginal woman who went into war, there was this picture of this chief blessing her and honoring awesome. her as she goes off to battle. Like, mm -hmm. so significant, these things. So I encourage you, it's not like it's a super high-end museum, like, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it's at the bottom of the Legion in on Louise Street location. And they've done it really well and has such beautiful memorabilia. The people were so kind and mm -hmm. so nice and so helpful. And they're willing to share their stories with you, talk to you. Um, all that. The only thing that they said was we couldn't take pictures or videos of the weapons, weapons which right. yeah. totally makes sense. Um, so yeah, so we're going to check out that video right now. Well, I am here at the Saskatoon Veterans Museum. Uh, Ashley and I are going to go and check this out. Of course, we're trying to honor our vets this week before Remembrance Day and take some time to learn some things. So guess what, unedited, you get to come with me. So we're gonna go in now.
it's talk time, so we're gonna get back into the book of John. But before we go there, I wanna propose an idea, or just a thought, okay? We'll have yeah. a little discussion here, okay? I like this. Yeah. How, 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 have you ever had to try to convince someone of something new? I try to convince people of things all the time. How does that go over for you? <laughs> <laughs> How do you find that goes over? Well, I guess it depends on the person, but yeah. not usually very well. <laughs> it's interesting when we try to convince people to even think differently, right? Because we, 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 we get quite set in our ways. We get set in our culture. We get set in our ideals and our comforts and our particulars, our opinions, right? Like Traditions we, we, even. Exactly. Yeah. We all have these things that we go through. And so I find sometimes, you know, it's interesting when you sit with someone who could have an open mind because it, it seems like it's rare. You, you almost have to work to make it happen. Oh, 100%. Right? Yeah. And I admit that about myself. Like, you know, there's ways that I see the world and, you know, for me to rethink all that is is difficult, right? So introducing new ideas to people, I think you laughed on purpose there because it's not always easy. Right? It's not always... Well, uh, I do work with you. Yeah, exactly. So... <laughs> yeah, there you I'm go. I'm going to convince you to think differently this week, right? <laughs> So, but uh, anyhow, like in the story in John, that's exactly what's happening here is Jesus is trying to teach them something new. And we're not even just talking like new, like, oh, that's a cool idea. We're talking like radically. Like, new. Yeah. We're talking like paradigm shifting here. Yeah. Like, and let me explain that for a second. It's like once we once thought the earth was flat, right? There's probably a few people who still do. Yep. But, you know, we've learned that that's not the case, right? As yep. things have progressed. And so it's a paradigm shift to think that you could actually fall off this planet to realizing that you can't, you can't. Yep. right? Definitely. And so, That's so, a good example. so this yep. is this is what's happening here. Is Jesus is now coming down towards the people who are really steeped in Abraham mm -hmm. and in the Torah and in the Old Covenant, so the Old Testament, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. and 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 they're, 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 that's where they've been living. And Jesus is coming before them, and he's making all sorts of claims about himself, and he's telling them a different way in which that they can get to his heavenly father, right? Yeah. Even just using the language father would have been a mind blowing thing to them because up until this point, it was Yahweh or it was Jehovah or it was a different word. And the idea behind it was that not anyone could just approach Yahweh or Jehovah, right? Usually to, that was yeah, the, the high all, priest yeah, yeah. who would be, you know, ceremonially cleansed. Like they'd go through a process in order to do that. And they'd often bring back a message from God to the people. Mm -hmm. And in this case, Jesus is saying, that we could have a relationship with God, that each one of us can see God as Father, and each one of us can know Him that way. And that that in itself, I think, would have been it's a crazy. Mind -blowing thing. Because even that people who know a lot about Moses and going yeah. to the, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he had to go on a journey and yeah. stay up there and he'd come down yeah. and deliver them at, Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It seemed like yeah. you couldn't just talk to him as your dad or no. your friend or no, there was this <clears throat> such strong reverence that you couldn't even look, right? Like or like you cover just, your face. Yeah, you yeah. had to bow down and like Take it, off your shoes. Yeah. And yeah. I think we miss some of that in our society, if some I'm going to be it. honest. Like a yeah. tad of it, the right? Whole, yeah, some of the whole thing. There, yeah. there is something good about being reverence and having yeah. awe and, you know, knowing that God is that great. But at the same time, Jesus brings this idea forward that this is your father, right? This is my father, but he also is your father. And uh, there's a lot of fighting going on here in these verses, right? And you guys mm -hmm. talked about it last week very well, uh, you and Paige, and uh, just this being slave to sin thing and... All of a sudden, um, they were arguing, like, you know, Abraham's our father. And uh, Jesus was saying, if you were Abraham's children, you would actually do this. You'd see it the way I'm telling you. And so there's this mm -hmm. clash of worldviews happening here, right? Yep. It gets to the point where, you know, Jesus is letting them see that you can't see this properly because you cannot follow me where I'm going here. So I'm trying to teach you this, right? Mm -hmm. At this point, you follow the ways of the world. You follow the things of the world, right? And this is where we, 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 we see the word devil, right? Like in this portion, like mentioned, like you follow these ways right now. And I want to explain to you, I want to enlighten you on something much greater for you. And so they're fighting back and forth here, gets to the point where the people are even calling Jesus like demon possessed. They're calling yep. him a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. Which in that is all like not good, despised, right? We, we talked about that a bit with the women at the well, exactly. right? Exactly, like Samaritans, yeah. So like they're going back and forth here, and Jesus is um trying to teach them. And at the very end of it, it says, um, they they said to him, "You are not yet fifty years old." The Jews said to him, "And you have seen Abraham," because Jesus talked about how he'd seen Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then Jesus makes this statement: "I tell you the truth," Jesus answered, "Before Abraham was born, I am." And uh, that's one of the I am statements that we find in the book yep. of John. And uh, essentially what he's saying to them is I was there before it all began. I was with my father in the beginning. I, you know, I'm before creation. And they're looking at him as like this 30 year old person. Right. 
They don't get it. Yeah, and probably thinking like, how can you make these claims? And, and so it just gives us respect for how, how, how tough this would have been for the original audience, I think, to understand the claims that Jesus was making. And yet it gives such weight to the claims that Jesus was making as well, mm -hmm. that he is God, that he is a loving God. He cares for them. He wants the best for them. He wants them to experience life the way it was always meant to be experienced yep. with God. And it says at the end there, at this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds, right? And uh, we always talk about this, but how he slipped away would be interesting to see, right? And, uh, <laughs> Sneakiness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, they were not happy. Like to make a statement like that, to call yourself I am is literally to declare you're God, right? Yep. And so that's, that's what, what Jesus was doing. was doing in this portion of scripture. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of us, um, you know, we could find ourselves in the same situation as the descendants of Abraham here in this story, right? Where we have a tough time seeing the world differently. We're, we're, we're so born into our ideas. We're so born into our thoughts that we never really challenge even our own. Or we thinking. just don't want to yeah. because it's inconvenient or then it's not the way we think it is and yeah. it changes things yeah. and right. And it's not our comfort, right? Like nope. You get comfortable with certain things. This is this way. This is that way. But what if God even today still challenges our thinking every day? What if he still wants us to see things afresh? What if he still wants us to see people the way he sees them and the way he loves them? And he does. Absolutely. He does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Jesus here, by saying, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was born, I am, this was a claim where he was just saying, I'm the one you're looking for. I'm the one the scriptures point towards. I am God, right? Like, you know, me and the Father are one. You know, when we talk about the Trinity and, the, you know, in scripture, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? They work in unison and, uh, and he wants to be Lord of our lives. And yeah. he came down to save us. He came down to love us. He came down to care for us. And not, just, in, just in the same way that our view has to change in order to accept him, I think our view has to change also in order to live for him mm -hmm. properly, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to be open to that. And teaching somebody something new or a new way of thinking doesn't always go over, you know, without its challenges. Of course, of course. <laughs> if we could yeah. say it like that. But yet I think God wants us to experience him afresh even right now. And so when I read through all this, when I looked through all this, at the end of the day, I thought to myself, you know, that God is good. He's great. He loves us. He wants us to be more like him. And he wants us to, to live for him and with him in this world. And uh, to me, that's great privilege. Now what? So we're going to talk about the talk here and what we kind of get from this. And I think this one can actually be pretty applicable. I, I think, think so, yeah. you know, trying to convince people of new ideas and trying to at least open your mind up to different things, I think is something that we're not very good at. And so I think one of the ways in which you can do this is maybe you get yourself involved in pursuing things a little bit more intentionally. Uh, maybe reading the Bible for the first time. Like we're all at different levels, right? We're all at different spaces in our, our journey of faith and our walk in life. And uh, open the scriptures. Maybe it'll, it'll help you see things something a little differently. Attend a church service with someone. Maybe That's going to be um, a big step for people. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Attend a church service. Uh, open your mind to that. Maybe uh, meeting someone for, 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 for coffee who thinks differently than you having conversation, being able to at least understand them. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them. Doesn't no. mean we ever have to but agree with each other. But being open to listen, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe meeting up with someone of a different faith than you and oh, just being good. able yeah. to love them and have that conversation despite perhaps the things that might separate you. Um, there's so much more that can bring you together and you can love each other, right? And so, I don't know. I, I think the way we take this message is that, you know, Jesus really made some bold claims and sometimes those things shock us, but I encourage you to check into it a bit more, look into it a bit more, explore the, per the person of Jesus and his teachings. As we're going through this uh, teaching in the book of John, uh, just start reading the book of John over and over and over again. I think it'll give you a fresh perspective of what it was that Jesus came to teach and what he came to bring us. That's good. So That's good stuff. Yeah. Okay, so as we end today, instead of praying, we okay. are going to give a blessing. Love it. And I'm going to do it straight out of scripture. So it's Paul's final greetings in 2 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of goes with a little bit of what we're talking about today. So. Awesome. As we leave from unedited today, <laughs> strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Amen, right? I like it. So guess what? What's that? Next episode is yeah, a big one. I heard. 
Do you remember why? It's been a year, hasn't it? One year anniversary for unedited. <laughs> That's so gone quick. Eh? I know it's, it's gone, gone quick, and it felt like a long time, but it's gone quick at the same time. Right? I know it's super it's exciting though, like just to <laughs> feel like one whole year under our belts, right? Yeah, I think we should go down memory lane. Yeah, we're going to. We're gonna have to. So you'll have to tune in next week <laughs> for unedited. Yeah. So thanks for joining us today. And uh, hot chocolate. Cheers. So great. Cheers. Yeah, I'm gonna sip properly. No slurping. See you next time. Okay. All right. Let's do this. We keep saying that. Okay, we're doing it. Are we? Yeah. You sure? Because we, yeah, we want to have lunch and we need to meet <laughs> the big man on campus. It ain't you. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> In a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. Get some vibes going. <laughs>